very passionate about that. So when I saw the situation, what happened in Philly. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I'm very passionate about it. Hey, Mimi, what's going on? What's going on? You all right? Hey, Mimi, how you doing? Oh, she ain't happy. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we yes. hear you. I'm just joining the conversation. Okay. Hey, Sophia. Hey, Sophia. Hey. Go right ahead. The floor is yours. The floor is, y is yours, ladies. Go right ahead. Uh uh, go ahead and put Mimi up there. Mimi, you go over here and get in the big square. Y'all put Mimi oh, no, in the big don't. square because I, I, I'm Farmer John right now. I just came out the. Okay. Don't put me in the big square. Move me, please. <laughs> I'll be on the big screen. Put me on the big screen. I'll yeah. be on the screen. Like oh, go ahead, Jordan. Oh, oh, hey, girl, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not only that, but thank you for coming up, Sophia. You never came up over here. I really appreciate it because I was like, I want to interview you anyway. And you came up mm -hmm. on your own. You see how the universe works? You came on your own willing today. So shout out to the universe. <laughs> okay, listen, y'all. Okay, Ronnie, I came up here for you. For you, Ronnie. Of course. I'm here for mm. you because I'm out there working with plants and stuff. And Ronnie, I got, I need I got you your blood to going. Understand. Mm. Yes. But look, I'm gonna try to woo so I gotta remember where I'm at. Y'all are gentlemen over here. I don't have to be no, I don't have no, to be rich. No, no, speak, to speak baby, get in your bag. Okay, Ron. All right, baby. I need you to understand this. When women are in abusive situations, there there are a lot of steps that take place before she ever gets to that abusive phase. I know people constantly say, just choose better, be more diligent. Use a little discernment. What y'all really, really need to understand is that these men mimic who we are. When we're in that courting phase, that getting to know each other phase, they are paying attention to who we are and what we seem to like and whatnot. And so they're just reflecting back to us exactly what they know we need to want to be with them. And I know y'all have heard other men say, if you just shut up and listen long enough, she'll tell you everything you need to know to give. It's true. It's so true. So we don't know. We honestly don't know. And a lot of us are just happy that we met somebody who seems like he's that one, but he's just reflecting back to us what we want to see. And then once he stripped you of everything, and I don't mean like it's... um. I'm not going to say it's intentional for all of them, but there are a lot of predators out there. But just for the common guy, because the way patriarchy is set up, we don't have anything. They want us to move in with them or they move in with us. They want us to submit to them. We do those things. You start intermingling your money. You got children to think about and everything else. So a lot of times it's not as simple as just walking away once he takes that mask off and shows you who he really is. And he knows that. He knows that. He will love you to pieces to get you where he needs you to be and slowly strip you of the things that you need so that you can get away. And we can't, none of us can deny how important money is. Money is very important. So like they say in a bad marriage, say you're married for 10 years. You might take five years to get out of it when you realize that it's not a good situation for you because you got to stack your money. Some people, you have to strategically plan how to leave them because you know that they're going to flip out on you. They may hurt you. They may hurt your family. And sometimes... It, y'all, it's so serious sometimes that women will acquiesce in every way. Just imagine like on a regular day, on a regular daily basis, if I go to the gas station or I'm leaving the grocery store, anything like that, depending on who the man is. And a lot of times, y'all, we're talking about out of 10 men, eight of them will get ratchet with you real quick just because you said, hey, I'm not interested. No, I'm not going to give you my name. Sometimes they just be like, come on, just give me a smile. What's wrong? Is it that hard to just give me a smile? So we find ourselves, even if I don't want to smile, who the hell are you to tell me I got to smile? I don't have to give you a smile, but they will harass you that way. And so just to like disarm him and to make sure that we can get out of a situation safely, get to our car safely, 
we will give him that smile, even though we didn't want to. And it's even more complicated when you're in a relationship with a man like that, because he can fly off the handle and you could lose your life. So it's not easy to get out of that abusive situation. And we will take it. And a bad situation is like, just imagine if someone is sexually assaulting you, you don't told him no over and over and over again. You don't told him no. This is your man. This is someone you're in a relationship with. You have told him no over and over again that night. I'm not in the mood. My stomach is cramping. I'm too tired. Whatever the situation is, you just don't feel like being intimate right now. If it's your husband, then he very well may pull the Bible card on you and tell you that you have a responsibility according to the Lord to give him that. And he can take it if he wants to or whatever. Or you can fall asleep and he just decides he's going to slide it in or whatever. But imagine if it's a man that is being aggressive with you, that has beat you before or whatever. We will just lay there and let them do whatever to keep ourselves safe or to keep our children safe. And we will do that over and over again. And that's why in these conversations with you all, I, I want to come to your spaces. I want to come and speak to gentlemen like you because we need to have these real conversations. But it is really very triggering for us because some of us have been through this and I mean over and over and over again. And then you compound that by people telling you and without meaning to gaslight you, there are some that are very intentional about it, but there are some just because of the system that has been set up because you are a man and you've been conditioned to think, believe and walk and talk a certain way. You believe that we just, we want it to be this way. We chose that. We didn't. We didn't. Y'all, we don't make that. We don't make that choice. We are truly fooled into believing that on so many societal levels. Sometimes when a woman wants to leave, she'll have her very own family turn against her. And if she is dealing with a toxic, narcissistic man, he has already laid so many different webs of disinformation out there with your family, sometimes even with your children. You will just be being mom, trying to handle business in that house. You could be just doing what you're supposed to do. Didn't I tell you to clean up that room? I'm not gonna ask you again to clean up that room. And then he's behind your back telling your kid, oh, she just don't understand you. She just don't, you know, messing with every person who you would have a connection with that you would be able to reach out to. So then when you're trying to leave, You've got that going on because he's been lying and you haven't been talking because what else are we taught, y'all? We're taught to keep family business in the home. We're taught to keep our business in the house. Ladies, don't talk about your relationships with anybody else. So we, we have to come through all of that. We got to think about the safety of our children. We got to think about the money. Sometimes if you're a religious woman, you're in church, you have the church moms. I mean, the white dress, white glove moms telling you that, you just haven't submitted to your man. So if you submit to him, then God will bless you with this, that, and the other. Y'all, it is so much more complicated than us just realizing that he ain't nothing and I need to get away from him. And then Cassie's situation, look, y'all just let me know if I'm talking too much. No, 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 no. The thing that you go, you and your, the thing that you just, you speaking true. Queen. You speaking true, we don't, we, I'm quiet. Look, go ahead. I got my blood bowling on this. Lonnie Brown, you got my blood bowling on this, man. You was about to lose a dreadlock. You, you was about to lose a dreadlock out there, y'all. Okay, so with the Cassie situation, I follow some people on TikTok, lawyers who have been, from the time that she filed this case, breaking down exactly what happened with that. In that situation, um, from a business perspective, Diddy had already told her no. We don't know how long, we don't know how many years she'd been threatening him and telling him, I'm gonna put your business out there. We don't know any of that right there. But what we do know is that she said, I want X amount of money at a certain time. And then you had the laws in New York getting ready to change to where she wouldn't have been able to report it anymore. So once she filed the case and she couldn't file it criminally because a criminal case would mean that you have to rely on a jury of your peers and whatnot. And like y'all said, the people like to watch the train wreck. Why do they rock, rock <coughs> Chris Sean and Blueface? Okay, so instead of gambling on that, she decided to let them <coughs> look at that work and make a rational decision. With all the information that I just put just in my file, do you want to take that chance? Do you want to mess with me that way? 
and he has a business. That business is not just him alone writing the checks and everything. You've got lots of people involved, lots of people invested in that money. You have insurance policies and everything. So what happened was he would have been forced to sh like step down off of everything, like take his name off of everything or just let the insurance company pay her that little bit that she asked for. And so that's what happened. They tried to hush her up by giving her that money. And Diddy didn't agree with it. It was the bigger people, the higher ups, the insurance companies and whatnot, saying that it looks like this lady has got a case. And we got all these other people that have been saying this, that and the other for all these years. So they just made a rational business decision when it came down to that payout for her. But Diddy wasn't going to pay. And this probably would have never, she wouldn't even went as far as she had to if he would have just paid her that money when she asked him about it. Yeah. He did. So now we have this whole snowball effect happening. And I love that you guys are talking about this. I, I, I'm i going to try my best to get more people to come to you guys because you're having real conversations. You're having balanced conversations. Yep. You're not being rude about things. This is not no, ha, 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 we got to laugh every five minutes and entertain the people in the Coliseum. You know, y'all are keeping it real. And I appreciate that so much yeah. because um, y'all, we need to. We, we are in trouble out here. I've been yeah, trying to we are on the channel to try to slowly wake people up and, and inform them because it's like going from zero to 100. But we have to because it's that dire. That young man, um, the, oh Lord, what the kicker for um, Arizona. I don't even remember his name. But anyway, that commencement speech that he gave saying that women need to be happy to be married. And that's our greatest responsibility. Yes, and you've got yes. your degrees, but it doesn't matter and all this other stuff. Yeah. That's huge because that man is backed by, um, oh God, a lot of conservative think tanks and everything. What yep. they're doing right now is playing in our face. Yep. They are going to slowly keep putting out. The video that I put out with Jazz questioning, mm -hmm. see how smug he was on that video. Y'all need to remember what it was like when Trump was in office. Yep. Everything yep. that they did wrong during that time, they've already put a fix in place for that. And it is Project 2025. So from the day, whoever it is, it doesn't have to be Donald Trump. But from the day the Republican president steps into the office, they got the playbook and they are going to just be like, bam, 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 taking away everything. Even our ability mm -hmm. to protest will be illegal. And I live in Florida. Ronnie, you live in Florida, Hockey. I don't know if you're in Florida. Yep, I, in I'm Florida, in Miami. Do you remember? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So Ron DeSantis said that it was legal for people to run you over if you're in the street protesting. Do y'all yep. remember That's that? correct. I remember yes, that. That is correct. Okay. So imagine that on such a wide level, the college students who have been protesting against the situation in Gaza. And I... I by my no, no means. I mean, genocide anywhere is atrocious. Um, I'm backing the Gaza thing right now because it's in the forefront and that's what people, but I've been worried about Congo, Sudan. There's there's genocides going on all over this world right, right now. That is correct. Um, right. Yep, the South Sudanese. The thing with Gaza, it just so happens to be people who are more closely this color. So yeah. they're, they're getting a lot more attention on this. But it's about the money, y'all. We have to follow the money. And they yep. messed up big time with this one, big time. So we these is, this is how we get our allies. We need to go ahead, support them on this thing, and get them behind us to start taking down everything else that's going on. And then at the same time that you got that going on, okay, so you got Project 2025 happening right here in the United States where they're trying to strip everyone's rights. This is not just about women. This is about everybody. So they're stripping our rights, right? They're doing mm -hmm. these genocides in our face. We're funding these genocides while American people are starving. Okay. Preach. And yep. all the same time that's happening, the banks are collapsing and they're moving their money to digital form. And yep. Australia, they have already said no more cash. So there's just one day out the clear blue, you can't even go and put your card in the ATM machine and withdraw your money. Money, yeah. You have yep. to go digital, okay? Then they can automatically shut you off when they want to or whatever. It, it gets so damn big, Preach. y'all. It's scary, and we're watching it happen. And the bricks move. 
right now we are we're failing america is failing big time and the whole world is so tired of our mess we have a lot of people that are not messing with us for real okay so when they went ahead and created that whole brick situation and said that we are going to back our currency with gold silver real tangible items we're not any longer going to operate off of your fiat fake just print money system okay when that happened that took a lot of power away from us the united states is not talking about it we're sitting over here living in our little vacuum playing our little games on the internet and everything not paying attention to what's happening on top of them saying we're going to take away TikTok as a platform because you guys are speaking too much truth. You're waking yep. people up too fast. So freedom of speech out the window, out the window yep. altogether. But on top of that, with the BRICS thing, y'all, there are weather events, strange weather events that are happening that are hitting the BRICS nations. Don't forget about what just recently happened in Hawaii. They didn't find those children. They tried to tell us it was just some strange wildfire that just happened all of a sudden. That's not true. That's not true at all. We have the capability. We have the military capability. We put all of our money into the military. We have the capability to make anything happen. We've been doing this for decades. We will affect <laughs> the weather of the people that we want to take over. And then we place governments in there that will do what we want them to do. So we'll strip them of their ability to feed themselves by making sure that they can't grow their own crops. And then we go back and we say, okay, we're going to give you all of these things and we're going to charge you 10 times for that. So that's your Jamaica, your Haiti. Y'all, it's happening and has been happening for a very long time. And right now, strangely, Brazil is being flooded in a way that it has never. And you don't see them covering that here in the United States. Those men who were stuck on the boat that, that hit that bridge a month ago, 20 of them, y'all, because they were um, from India and Sri Lanka and didn't have visas, which you know you don't have to have visas if you're on the ship because there's a different set of laws when you're on the ocean. So they were doing their job, they're on that boat. And the boat hits one of the pilings and the whole damn bridge falls down on them, right? So while yeah. they're trying to clear up this rubble, these men are stuck on this boat. They took their cell phones so that they couldn't communicate with the outside world. And this has been a month, maybe more than a month. The only reason they started talking about it within the last two days is because somebody from the BBC reported on it. But if they weren't made to bring that to our attention, then those people would still just be trapped on the boat. And then the general sits there and says, they're part of the boat straight out in their face telling them, we don't consider you to be a soul, a spirit, a human being. You are part of that mechanical thing and you have a job and you don't matter. So we're going to leave you on there and we're going to set off explosives to move the rubble. And we don't care if your family knows what's going on with you or anything. So just imagine that, okay? Just imagine if that's happening right now, how easy it would be for them to come to any city in this country once Project 2025 goes into place because we got a whole bunch of other folks voting for that too. Because whether y'all wanna see the connection or not, you have to understand that this is a lot of propaganda. These gender wars, propaganda. Yep, it's so big time. They will have us fighting against each other. So when it's time to vote, all people are gonna hear is, oh, women are gonna be back in the home. Yeah, that's just the first step. That's why I say you can put the nail in your own coffin because that's just the first step. Everybody's going to be listening for that little thing. Yep, we need family. We need this. We need that. Okay, you do that and you vote in the wrong person. And then the next person to be put back into 1800 position is going to be you and then the next and the next and the next. And it'll just be that 1% of this colored people, not all of them, because what they're realizing now, just like they did, just like they did back in the 1800s, is that all of the poor people recognized what was happening. All the poor people, no matter what your color was, that's when they created race, okay? And they, they gave them a ticket and they said, guess what? We're gonna let you be white like us. But before that, there was only a specific group of people who were considered white like that. 
But they, they said, we got to do something because all the poor people are getting together and they're going to mess us up. That's the only reason. And then those people, just like we would do today, said, well, I want to feed my family. I want to live a better life. I, I want some money. I want some land. So they turned against the Native Americans. They turned against everyone that they had been working against, working with, because they had a little bit of power and all they had was just a label. It's like your boss saying, hey, I'm going to make you into a manager, but he doesn't give you a pay raise. He just gives you a, a badge that says I'm the boss. That's what they did to the poor white people. And they turned against us, didn't they? And there's a lot of them, if they're uneducated and they're poor, who are they angry with? Us, right? And then you got black men and black women fighting against each other. It's the same thing that took down the Black Panther Party, y'all. It's the same thing just repeating itself. And it works because we don't talk about all of that. And Lord have mercy. So many of us are so dumb. I love y'all, but so many of us are dumb. And they did it intentionally, like education wise. What did they do here in Florida? Gentlemen, you know what they did here in Florida. Yep, yep. With the Kids AT weren't class. able to pass the F. Yeah. They yep. couldn't pass it. They couldn't pass the F cat. So what did they say? Ah, we don't need it. Because they don't care if you're educated. They don't care if you have reading comprehension skills. All they care about is that you can go and work behind that some desk somewhere or go press some buttons. And now they don't even need you for that because they're bringing in AI. So Preach. Look, Preach. that's all I can it's Friday night, and I'm supposed to be starting my turn up. I know, my so, um, so fine, so fine. Right. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to trigger you. I didn't mean to trigger you. I didn't mean to trigger you, but we had to let you go in. Ronnie, I was coming for them. I was coming for them friends, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, uh, go ahead, Mimi. You had anything to say? Uh, Co-host of the Sachi Avengers in the building. You, you ain't want to hear what I had to say, Sophia. Sis, you brought grace today because me and Ronnie, we was gonna fall out. We was gonna fall out. <laughs> You, we were, you laughing. We were about to fall out. So just know I love you and I appreciate you. you. Like I said in the comments, it's so many more layers. It's so many more layers to it. And and you came out and you you spoke on it. I'm good. I'm I'm gonna go, no, I'm no, gonna no, shake no, my no, no, under the table. No, 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 <laughs> no, but you know look, what? No, be honest. We have women not be watching and break down the layers. Exactly, break down the layers. Listen, the boy I was hot. My my girl in there, I was hot and I was like, she was like, What's wrong? What's wrong? I said, I'm gonna go get on this panel. <laughs> Me and Ronnie finna fall out. Listen, I'm okay. I love you. Look, I had on my gardening clothes, girl. I was, I was like, look, look. <laughs> okay. my, hey, I my, 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 oh, at work, know. at work and everything. Listen, I, me and Ronnie was gonna fall out. I just, we was gonna no, fall no out. No, no way, no way. Because you go, well, no, I, but uh, I'm being honest. Speak your truth, because you know why? We have women that do watch the show. I, do, I know women personally that watch the show. They say, oh, I came and join. They say they love you guys, to be honest. They say, you guys are doing a great, amazing job. They like, they put them on the show every day. They know who they are because they do watch the show a lot. Yeah. A lot of women. I, so, I, I, I watch say, you all the time, Sophia. Talk about it. So <laughs> maybe talk about it. Speak your truth. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Go ahead. No, I, I agree with everything that Sophia said. You, <laughs> I, I will. I will. She was in a yeah. bag. I was uh -huh. listening. Yeah. It was going to be a hip to my least. Thank God for Sophia. She said, she said, Ronnie. <laughs> but, Sophia brought grace, baby. But, but you know, Sophia, you really. Mimi, it's coming. It ain't, it ain't, look, it ain't late enough yet. If it was late, Ronnie was about to get the things. Girl. Okay. Listen, but Sophia, you touched on something that really is, a, is an eye opener that we need to really analyze in this space, having healthy conversations. A lot of it are not productive, especially amongst black men and black women especially things that affect you and affect me so we can come to an understanding about stuff. Cause let's be honest about it. We had a space right now where I can truly say that black men don't understand women. We don't understand our women. We've lost the comprehension because of the disconnect of so much trauma, so much thing that goes on. I've seen you touched on it. I've seen Genesis touched on it and you know what I mean? And, and, and it's sad enough that, you know, I mean, you have a lot of people who are very intelligent in this space. I'm not going to mention their names, but they don't touch on the natural things of that. Uh, of the, oh, Ruben, of, Ruben, Ruben say no, you're wrong. Whoa. Ruben, we're not going to argue. If you could come on a panel, 
You but can no come argument. with Ben. You keep it. About the, hold, on, about the, hold on, hold on. Who is it? Ruthless, Ruthless True. Ruthless True. Man, look, Ruthless, I I'm love saying. Google, but I'm finna go back in my yard. Oh, I'm saying. I'm saying. We ain't trying to argue. Friday night, y'all. I just got off work. I got things I got to do. I ain't ready for no Rufus. And then he gonna come up there with that lion behind his head. I ain't ready for Rufus. <laughs> He said, "Hey, he told he told me to quit pandering. That's what he told." Me. Look, that's another one of their little catchphrases. They always talk about you pandering. Yo, we got a lot of stuff to talk about with this toxic masculinity thing. Because when when guys want to speak the truth about things and how they really feel about it, because a lot of guys get it, but they don't want to go against the man club. Everybody will end up saying, "You a punk? You pandering? You simping?" You know, y'all have to, men, y'all need to get in a room and y'all need to have it out about that right there. But I will say, I'm noticing that a lot of our young boys, the, the, the young bros, they, they get it. They're waking up. They, they're they not for this mess. And as long as they can see that there's one other person in the room, that one other person that has their back, then they put their chest up and, and they do what they got to do. But you got to remember, they're going against older men who know how to bark them down and everything else. But as long as they have a little, a little cheerleader in the corner, like yeah, you go, then then they stick their <laughs> with chest the pom poms and everything. Yes, the pom poms with the pom poms and everything. But our 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 young men are really they're getting it, and I'm so proud of them. And they they have to be brave in order to stand. But what up about the older men? We're not getting it. We not the older men's not getting it. You're not gonna get it. It's a fire. What are you talking about? You, if you talking about my generation, so fire, what if you talking about? Yeah, you talking about older men. What age I, are you talking about? Yeah, yeah what age? Okay, so I'm, when, when I say older men, I'm talking about. I want to say like 38 and up. 38 and up. They are hardcore, hard and fast, stuck in their patriarchal beliefs about things and in order for them to accept this new reality of what's going on they're going to have to do a lot of unpacking and deconstructing and it's difficult to do that because they feel like they lose their identity at the same time so um y'all just keep creating safe spaces for them and encourage them to open up and to go to therapy and to be able to talk about things freely because that's all it is honestly i mean it, it's the older men that are really hard and fast stuck in their ways. And when you think about the government stuff, that that's who was in our government, y'all. They ain't even playing. They're, they're not even playing. They, they When it comes down to women's reproductive rights even, they're saying, so um, how close to death does she have to be before, yeah. you know? Basically, that's what they're like. So um, if she's just brain dead, you, nah, she, we, we still need that baby. Because for them, it's all about getting more bodies to work the machine. Okay. Yep. At the end of the day, Man, they don't care it. about they don't care about women. And then next, they're not gonna kill me, y'all. So all of all all of us who have somehow convinced ourselves that we're part of the club, you're not. You never were. You never <laughs> will be. And Vladimir Putin came out and said, "Guess what, y'all? Sweet baby Jesus is black." You know what? Once he did that, they really got scared. So. Yeah, black diet. Oh, I I saw, yeah, I saw. I saw. I wanted to, to be honest. I wanted to cover it, but I was so nervous. I was like, if we cover that piece, we gotta get flat. Talk, talk to people about religion. We can't. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Down. So I was like, no, I, I just um, left it alone. I saw. I really wanted to cover it so bad because I was like, yo, that was literally in uh, over there in Russia, literally, and they own part. Well, not who well, they pray to. My channel is little. My my channel is very little, so I ain't got nothing to lose. That's why I put cuss words in my stuff and everything. I don't care. We, my, I'm doing this. I, I'm not doing this for money. Not saying that money wouldn't be, you know, that's a good byproduct, y'all. But <laughs> what I'm really doing this for is to stake my claim in the revolution. This is something that my children and my grandchildren and my great grandchildren, provided the government doesn't take it down because more, they will be able to say, this was my, my mama's part in the revolution. This is my part to march. This is the what I can do to make this change instead of sitting back and worrying about Chris Sean and, and who's humping who and, you know, all that stuff stuff right there they'll you know they'll be able to look back and see that i i used my voice and i used my fingers and i used my money no but, so, but Sophia, i want you to understand something even though you may have one two three views you still may be able to impact somebody i yeah. realize that a yeah. lot it doesn't matter about the view count you get what i'm saying it's mm -hmm. always about you impacting somebody look by me saying what i said look got you two beautiful women on the panel quick 
I, I'm, impacted. I'm impacted. Oh, I'm impacted. I'm impacted. You know what I'm saying? Did we Even just reinforce a negative behavior? We just inadvertently reinforced a negative behavior. Dang. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and maybe we're gonna chop my head off, but I, you know, I was gonna debate. I was gonna debate heavy because I, you know, I debate heavy. But I was gonna say I was gonna debate respectfully. I was gonna debunk, though. and me and you was gonna fall out. <laughs> we was gonna bark on. We was gonna bark. <laughs> oh, two against one. That's not. That's not a fair. That's a. That's a tag team match. Put, that's not I was gonna match. tell Jordan put Ronnie in the big screen because I we finna get on his ass. That's what I was gonna. Say. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late now. I'm good. It's I'm a, I'm all now. gracious, baby. I'm all gracious, baby. I'm gonna look at look at Haki. Haki happy wasn't him. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, Haki's a sweetie. Thank you. He is a sweetie. Mm -hmm. But look, y'all, I have to go. I already I, I stepped out on my work, and I have to um I have to. I apologize. I, grow my I apologize. What 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 you grow? What you growing in the garden? Mango. Okay. Mango seeds. Listen, I got some mangoes. I got me some papaya. I just started some dragon fruit. We got all kinds of beans going. Listen, we just got started, so ain't nothing big yet. But we hey, don't forget listen. coconut. You need coconut. My dad love coconut. Man. He got like a big, a big. Coconut we gotta tree. do it all. I got banana trees planted. We doing everything because hey. you can't trust what we have going on out here. So today. I'm coming to grow your own food. Salad. I'm coming to Tampa for a salad then. No, but you're talking about where food. you at? Where you at, sis? Because when I come back in August, I need to be in your garden. She's that, she's <laughs> oh, come on, come on, come on. And then we're going to try to, we're trying to bring back all of the local veggies and stuff. Like, because people used to be able to walk down the street and just pluck fruit off the tree. Wouldn't nobody go hungry? Yeah. Everything was growing yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they just, they, they intentionally got rid of it. So I want to do everything I can. Wherever I go, I'm going to be like, look, let me throw. Throw a little orange seed over here. Let me throw some beans over here and just go back and be fertilizing and watering and setting up little fields where food is just growing because it doesn't make any sense that we're starving. It doesn't make any sense, y'all. It does. And I heard and I, and I heard that I heard it's great meditation too. Um, uh, like um gardening. My dad was telling me, like, yo, when you garden, it's great meditation. You should get into it. I was like, y'all might get into it. Um I'm learning about the plants. I just seen what grass looks like under the microscope, and it mm -hmm. actually has little smiley faces on it. Grass is smiling, guys. So when you go out there, oh, the that's cute. Hey, um, on the grass, you get that energy, and the plants see you coming, and they behave differently, and you can change the what? frequency of your water by writing words on it. Y'all learn it. Oh, that's you crazy. crazy. Do you ground beef? Huh? I'll take your uh, stools out. Do you do ground beef? Yeah. Listen, I mean, I, like when I went to Hawaii, listen, I had my socks off and I was walking, I was walking with my feet. Wow, the, the plants are smiling. That's dope. I ain't gonna lie, that's dope. They are. They feel you. Yeah. 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 I wanted to show you something. This is something that you might want to look at. This is a good book here. Yes. Yes. Look, Hakeem, I'm on it. All right. I'm mm -hmm. on it. I'm on it. Because, y'all, we need to get back to... Urban there's farming. a lot of grants out there for this, okay? There's grants out there for this, so we need to do it. And we need to get back to the point where we just trade with each other for what we want, and we don't give a damn about their money and their banking system, okay? Everything that we need is right here. And they've already shown us that rainwater, even dirty rainwater, if it's got mud in it and everything else, that's safer to drink than the water that's coming through the tap. That's a fact. Really? Everything. That, that's a fact. No, yes. That's yes. Fact. Yes. You, you and, know we, and the um, all of our food is poisoned. Everything is poisoned. Ronnie, we can't no, 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 because no Haitian, no, because Haitian people. I remember my mom used to tell me, "God bless her soul." My mom used to tell me all the time, like she like, if you are angry, take a shower outside in the rain. It calms you, like yeah. your energy down. <laughs> I never understand what she meant, but now I understand now why you're saying that. It, ma it makes a lot of sense. Yes, if you're feeling bad, go hug a tree. People used to make, they make fun of that. Oh, you tree hugger. Man, if you are having a bad day, go take go your shoes off and go hug a tree. Go hug them because they're doing nothing but emitting all of this beautiful, beautiful, radiant energy. And they're connected to everything everything they know these things they've always known these things they took this knowledge away from us because 
they wanted to rob us of our power and now people are waking up it's no longer hidden if you really want to know once you start tapping in it's going to be just like pulling a thread on it's just going to keep opening and opening and opening so you just have to just tap in and there will be some dumb dumbs out there that just won't get it they were never meant to get it they're npcs they're just here to show you what you need to know so that you can grow but um those of us who do get it Let's let's get it, y'all. No, no, it. but so I, I, I'm I'm agreeing with you because you know sometimes I do my early morning um, meditation. I look at the sun. I sun gaze. Some people are like, oh, you shouldn't sun gaze. I sun gaze to get the Does wisdom it, and the knowledge from the earth. Huh? Since the eclipse, the sun has been feeling different to me. Yeah, it I has, go out it in the morning. It has, it has, it has. Okay. but you can sun gaze. It's you can sun gaze if you sun gaze around like because you're in Florida. If you sun gaze around like seven to eight o'clock and you just look at the sun. It, it, it's a yeah. different atmosphere. It's a different. It brings you, mm. it brings you one to the one oneness with the earth. So it's just really, really, no, really cool. Even the bugs act different. I'm scared of everything. Oh, <laughs> oh I need to come up with the line this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because of you. And then you bring it. Hey, hey, sexy, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing, Rufus? I'm gone. I'm going back in my garden and I'm going to go watch the sunset. <laughs> Hi, Ruby. Hi. Come on. Damn, Damn Ruby. How do I get out of here? How I get out of here, y'all? Take me out of oh, here. I'm gone. Is it, is it, it's at the bottom. Is it, it leave? Right hand side at the bottom. Ooh. You see Ruthless run the women away, man. You see? Ruthless. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh. he leaves. <laughs> Can, 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 See, he goes back into the line. I don't know how to say goodbye. I'm leaving. Bye. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the bottom. It's at the bottom right. There you go. There you go. See, Ruthless. You, you see, Hakeem. Look at Ruthless. He let the women leave. 